Hello from Oklahoma City! If you missed our last video, we are exploring Oklahoma for the first time ever. And after road tripping from Tulsa down Route 66, we've made it to Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City is not only the largest city in Oklahoma, but also the capital of the state and is nicknamed the modern frontier as a nod to its Western and indigenous culture, plus innovation and new growth. And over the next three days, we're partnering with Visit OKC to explore as much of the city as we can. And first up, we're gonna grab some breakfast at Cafe Cacao. Cafe Cacao is a Latin American restaurant and there are no words to describe how excited we are for this meal. Just look at these insane coffee mocktails that we're starting out with. This is the mole mocha and this one is the underberg mocha which has underberg bitters which we got to try a little bit of and it's unlike anything I've ever tasted in my entire life. Mm. That is so good. Okay, thank you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> It just doesn't stop coming. Those sesames on the outside give it such a just nutty flavor, but it's just so sweet. Oh, that is so interesting, man. That is really good. You can taste a little bit of those bitters. We also have an appetizer, tostadas pibil, which are tostadas with refried black beans, cochinita pibil, pickled red onions, and feta. Mm -mm -mm. We are just straight up feasting here. We have an appetizer, we have all these drinks, and then we also have our main dishes here. And I got the desayuno chapin, which is the most traditional Guatemalan breakfast. It's scrambled eggs served with refried black beans, feta, fried plantains, sour cream, two flour tortillas, and then I got it with chorizo, which is all mixed in here. I could eat that every single day. The eggs with the chorizo in there, so spicy, so flavorful. A Little bit of sweetness of the plantain, creaminess of those black beans, the salsas every day, every single day I could eat this. And for my main dish, I got the motuleño, which has two corn tortillas under here that are filled with black beans. Normally it comes with eggs, but I got those removed and I added some asada to the top. It has a ranchero sauce all over it and it's surrounded by a moat of tortilla chips. Mm. If you thought we were done, just wait, there's more. So these are the berry pancakes, and they're known for these crazy, beautiful, delicious looking pancakes. And it has some kind of cream sauce on there that the owner, Luigi, said it's basically melted ice cream on top. Oh my gosh, this thing is bigger than, it's way bigger than my face. <laughs> it's humongous. Oh my gosh. Holy smokes. So warm and fluffy in there. Oh my, best pancake I've ever had, easily. It tastes just like a delicious cake. Oh my gosh. I cannot think of a more delicious way to start our time here in Oklahoma City. Between all of this food, this was hands down the best breakfast we have ever had. Oh my, mm. This is amazing. <laughs> We've headed a bit southeast to the Automobile Alley District, which was once home to over 50 car dealers. And you can still see many neon signs of car brands along the rooftops of the buildings. And there's also these markers on the ground that tell you what car dealership was in each building. In the 70s and 80s, the area went into a bit of a decline, but in recent years, it's been revitalized to be a really cool spot to hang out. There's tons of shops, restaurants, and even a unique art experience, which we're gonna go check out here in a bit. Since it's a rainy morning, we've just been wandering around into some shops and we just hopped into a shop called Shop Good, which is a t-shirt and gift shop with a bunch of Oklahoma and Oklahoma City items, items for kids, home decor, candles, cards, really anything you can think of. And they screen print all of the shirts right here in house. And apparently we're gonna get to screen print our own shirts. So this is our, our manual screen printing press. It's a, a six color, six station press. So we can print up to six colors at a time on a shirt. And this is what we'll be using here in a minute. We've been manual for the, the whole life of our, our business, but we've gotten to the point where we can't keep up uh, printing manually. So on, on the manual press, we can print like between 50 and 100 shirts an hour. On this, we can print up to 600 shirts wow. an hour. Wow, so, 100 yeah. something still really impressive. <laughs> yeah. 
Justin gave us a tour of the shop and explained the step-by-step -step process of how they create the screens before showing us how to actually screen print a shirt. I'm gonna flood the screen, it's called, which is basically just filling the print with ink. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull it across the print like that. And then with light pressure, I'm gonna go back across to cover it. Oh, wow. This could get messy. Oh, I'm nervous. Ta-da. That looks really good. Yeah. That was awesome. So we're just gonna run it through here, and when it comes out, it'll be ready to wear. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now it's my turn. I've picked this nice green shirt, and I'm thinking maybe like a cream color for the actual design. Okay. What are you thinking? Let's check it. <laughs> Nervous. Dang it. Yeah, there you go. It's definitely more filled in. Yeah. Now this yeah. part's not <laughs> It's only taking me like 20 tries. Oh, you're good. Today I've learned I'm not the best at even screen printing. Oh, so I'm gonna try one more shirt and see if I can get it perfect. Yeah, that looked good. Look, I made this myself. <laughs> that was so fun to learn. I cannot wait to rock this. Thank you for sharing all of your knowledge with us. Hey, thanks for stopping by. This I don't think fun. we're ready for a job yet, but we'll get there. <laughs> I mean, we're hiring. We would take you for sure. So. <laughs>One very unique spot in Automobile Alley is Factory Obscura. This is a 6,000 square foot immersive art experience and their current exhibition is Mixtape, which was hand built by more than 30 Oklahoma artists. We've never been to anything like this and it should be a lot of fun and very unique. So the mixtape experience is taking you on the emotional journey of making a mixtape or listening to one, and each different area is inspired by one of those different emotions on that journey. We begin by entering through the ear. It's so cool in here. We're only in the first room, but this place is so fun. It's just a completely interactive experience. I just crawled into this flamingo cave. You get to touch everything. There's music, you get to wear cool glasses. <laughs> this is the most colorful, whimsical, creative place we have ever been. There are so many interesting things in here. So much to look at. It's just like a, a party for all of your senses. There are even two slides here. Go into the first one. You gotta crawl to get to it. How cool. <laughs> oh, whoa. It's a big hole. What? All right, this first slide is kid sized, but they said adults go down it all the time and no one's gotten stuck. But I'm a big kid, so we'll see what happens. <sighs> Oh no. Ah, ah, ah. Oh no. This is the ultimate playground. Oh. Here we go again. Oh. even have karaoke. That was an incredibly interactive experience and there are just so many little details in there that you could spend hours just trying to see every inch of it. We love just colorful art activities like this and lucky for us, our art adventures for the day are not quite over just yet.
It's no secret that we are big mural fans and OKC was recently awarded best street art in the USA by USA Today. So we obviously had to come check out some street art while we were here. And one of the best spots in OKC to do that is the Plaza Walls. The Plaza Walls is an alleyway with a collection of over 30 murals from over 25 artists which rotate so there's always something new to see. We've been seeing lots of murals in our travels lately, but what we love about them is they just add a burst of color to every city and every mural is different, so it's never the same experience. We have a little bit of time before dinner, so we're breaking the rules and we're having dessert before dinner. We came to Boontown Creamery, which is a pretty new homemade ice cream shop here in town. And y'all, this place was made for us. Not only do they have a neon sign on the wall that says, ice cream is always the answer, which is basically our life motto. They have ice cream flights. They have two sizes of ice cream flights. And if you can't tell, we got the large one. Look at this thing. Six scoops, giant scoops of ice cream on a cricket board. We can go play cricket after this. This is awesome. <laughs> we got the oaky, munchy, crunchy, espresso crunch, caramel apple pie, Mediterranean strawberry, poached pear, goat cheese and pecan, and breakfast milk delicious. I was most excited for this caramel apple pie one. <laughs> Look at the apple chunks in there. Those apple pieces have tons of fall spices on there and they still have a good little crisp to them. I originally wanted the oaky, crunchy, munchy because of the name and then I found out there were potato chips in there and it has an amazing fudge flavor and also just a little bit of saltiness to it. <laughs> you can taste the goat cheese in there, kind of got a little bit of a tang and the pears are perfectly cooked and seasoned and they're nice and sweet. And... Oh my gosh, that straight up tastes like cereal. All of these are so rich and so creamy. This is incredible. I love this ice cream place and I especially love that we got to just try six flavors. <laughs> For dinner, we came to the Hall's Pizza Kitchen, which has this awesome patio. We started with some burrata and flatbread, which was insanely good, and my pizza just arrived. And when we came in here, I had full intentions of eating my entire pizza, but I think I'm gonna have some trouble. This one is the Sunday lunch, which has smoked brisket, roasted potato, charred onion, and jalapeno. The Sunday lunch came highly recommended. Oh my gosh, this is a massive slice. There's so much stuff on this. <laughs> Yeah, morning. This is like steak and potato meal on your pizza. With the sweetness from these charred onions, jalapenos, a little spicy. And then look at this crust here. That is pillowy, holy smokes. My gluten-free pizza is a much more manageable personal size. And this is homemade gluten-free crust. And it looks absolutely insane. It looks like it's gonna be the best one I've ever had. And I got the Sunday lunch one like Adam got. And this one is Russell the Goat, which is goat cheese, balsamic roasted tomato, basil and walnut pesto. Our waitress said this was her favorite pizza and she did not steer me wrong. I wanted to get more of a classic one and that's what this is, pepperoni, sausage, you know, cheese, classic pizza. But it is so damn good. This is a ridiculously good pizza, wow. We are absolutely stuffed. We're adding more to our OKC to go collection, which just means we get to enjoy this delicious food for even longer. This was probably our biggest food day in a while, and it was definitely one of our best food days in a while. And while we're here in OKC, we're staying at the KOA East Oklahoma City, which is a great home base if you're in an RV or a van, and Kona has absolutely loved running around their dog park. So we're gonna head there and sleep this off a little bit because we have another big day tomorrow. We're gonna be doing some outdoorsy things in and around the city, including one thing that you probably would never have guessed you could do in OKC.
Although OKC is a city, it still offers some different ways to get outdoors and some adventurous activities all within an urban setting. We're currently wandering around Scissor Tail Park, which is an almost 70 acre park that was actually just fully finished about a month ago. It has an upper and lower section that are connected by the stunning Skydance Bridge. And both the park name and the design of the bridge are both inspired by the state bird, the Scissor Tailed Flycatcher. This unique sculpture is made entirely of trash found in public spaces all around OKC. It's a great reminder, don't trash places, people. This park is incredible. It has the best views of the Oklahoma City skyline, it has a bunch of sport courts, including basketball and pickleball. It has a pond that you can paddle boat in, it has a super fun looking playground. And what makes the park even better is that you don't even have to leave to get food because there's a restaurant called Spark right on the northern edge of the park, which rhymes. <laughs> This place is known for their burgers, bites, and cold delights. We are just rhyming up a storm today, and I got the hottie spark. It has a burger patty, Schwab's ghost pepper cheese hot link, Swiss cheese, spicy truffle aioli, and Louisiana hot sauce. Mm. This burger is awesome. I really like the hot link on there. I almost got turned away from this burger because of it. I don't really like super hot things since it's a ghost pepper, but it's actually not too bad. And then you've got a little spicy aioli that's a little creaminess with the cheese. The hot sauce, you know, kicks it up even more with the tanginess. So I got their burger bowl, which comes with little crinkle cut fried croutons, which is super cute, and avocado, and it is cooked to perfection. But I think what I'm most excited about are these pink fries. They are crinkle cut fries with their special pink sauce. I have no idea what's in this pink sauce. Parmesan and parsley on there. I'm not sure what the pink sauce is, but I love it. It almost tastes like it might be like a garlic aioli or some sort of flavored aioli. It is real good. Spark also has delicious looking custard treats. And don't worry, we didn't forget about Kona. We got her a little pup cup. We love getting to experience cities by water when we can, and we've headed to the Bricktown area of downtown Oklahoma City to ride the Bricktown water taxi. This taxi ride is a 40 minute narrated ride through the Bricktown Canal, and it should be a fun way to see the area and learn a little history about OKC. Everyone say hi, Joey. Hi, Joey. These were old factories, warehouses, stuff like that. Then the Great Depression happened, World War II happened. Those led to this whole area being basically abandoned for about 60 years. Back in the 90s, the buildings were all busted up. I think the number one thing you would notice if you looked at a photo of the past, is this whole straight line of the canal right here. It was a street in California Avenue. So they dug out all of this around us here. All of this used to be underground. In fact, as you look around, these are the original basements of these buildings. They just built entrances into them. And what kind of led all of that to happening is the thing our mayor came up with in the 90s called MAPS. Uh, stands for the Metropolitan Area Projects, which is a lot for just kind of how simple it was. I mean, it was a lot of work, but it was just a one cent sales tax that lasted for about five and a half years. In that time, we raised around $360 million with which we built this lovely canal here. Our Chickasaw ballpark across the street up in front of us, built our Paycom Center with the Oklahoma City Thunder Play. Joey also explained to us some of Oklahoma's less positive history, like the Trail of Tears, which we'll share more about later, plus the land rush, which occurred on April 22nd, 1889, 
when the U.S. government opened some of the land they had taken from the Native Americans to white settlers who raced to stake their claim. By the end of the day, the area now known as Oklahoma City was home to 10,000 people, sparking the phrase, Oklahoma City was built in a day. And if like us, you've ever wondered what the heck is a Sooner, this was a nickname for those who snuck into the land early to claim land. <laughs> the water taxi ride was awesome. Our guy Joey was so funny and just had so many interesting tidbits of history and fun facts about both Oklahoma and Oklahoma City that we did not know. So we learned a lot and it was just really nice to just sit on a boat, just kind of relax and just soak up all the scenery. Just south of downtown on the Oklahoma River is the Boathouse District of OKC. Here you'll find a row of iconic boathouses including the OKC National High Performance Center, which is the official US Olympic and Paralympic training site for rowing, canoeing, and kayaking. There is tons to do in the Boathouse District, not only for high performance athletes, but also for families and travelers who are looking to get active. There's 13 plus miles of bike trails and a mountain bike skills course, zip lines, whitewater rafting, kayaking, and so much more. We're gonna head over to River Sport and do some rock climbing and do something we never thought you'd be able to do here in OKC, go skiing. We are going to be skiing first. And the last time we went skiing was probably four or five years ago. We went skiing near Vancouver, Canada, and it was a complete disaster. Adam struggled to get off the lift and he pushed me into this fence. I was going way too fast down the mountain because I was overly confident in my skills. Had to crash land a bunch of times. We ended up just carrying our skis down the mountain. So we're very excited to have someone teach us how to ski in a probably better setting to learn how to ski. <laughs> this is an infinite articulating ski slope, which is kind of like a treadmill that you can ride for as long as you want. Its surface is an artificial ski turf called pole snow, which is misted with water to create a feeling similar to real snow. The ski simulator features an inclination system so it can go from an easier blue run to the equivalent of a black run in just a few seconds. We're in. Three, two, one. Cool. <laughs> Oh. Crushed it. Thanks. Woo. Felt really good, actually. All right, now it's my turn, and I'm a little nervous that I'm going to absolutely suck at this, but I'm very thankful for this bar. It's kind of like when you go ice skating and you have like the, the, the like walker. The, the walker. <laughs> <laughs> this will make me feel better. Yeah. Cool. Now they're gonna throw obstacles at us. We're gonna have to dodge them. I think you're supposed to go around them, not just. Well, <laughs> there were no rules stated. Come on, come on. It was just go around the house to get around it. That ski machine was so much fun. And now we're gonna go do some climbing. They have this four-sided wall and each side is a different type of climbing experience. This is like ice climbing, which we did in Alaska. So that'll be really fun. This one is speed climbing. There's like an American Ninja Warrior style one. So we're gonna try to try them all out. I'm doing the crag crawl. You're That's awesome. Really tall. You're halfway there. Oh. Okay. Oh. Did you get it? I touched it. All right. Oh. There you go. Uh oh. <laughs> that wasn't how it was supposed to go. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, that was so scary. Oh yeah, this is up here. Oh god. Looks easy from down there. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so this one's called the leap of faith you climb up this 
ladder looking wall here get on the platform and then there's basically a punching bag looking thing you have to jump out and bear hug it and then you're just hanging there until you're ready to just let go and fall I chickened out on the leap of faith, but Adam did a great job. Looks hard. <laughs> it's really hard. <laughs> really? <laughs> For our final wall. We're gonna race each other. That was one of those activities that just totally takes you out of your comfort zone. It is scary, it is exhilarating, it is hard, but it's also so much fun. I'm very, very tired though, I'm so sore. For our final stop of the day, we've headed a little bit northwest of downtown Oklahoma City to Lake Hefner. This is a reservoir with 17 miles of shoreline and is a popular spot for locals to run, walk, ride their bikes, and get out on the water. And to continue our theme from skiing of things you maybe did not expect to see in Oklahoma City, there's a lighthouse here! What may have started out as a photo op has turned into a real registered official lighthouse with the U.S. Lighthouse Society and the U.S. Coast Guard. It is modeled after the Brant Point Light Station on Nantucket Island in Massachusetts, which is the second oldest lighthouse in the U.S. And we hear that this is an amazing place to watch the sunset. We just started our morning here in OKC with breakfast at Harvey's Bakery and Kitchen, which is absolutely beautiful on the inside and has so many delicious goodies to choose from. We had a sausage biscuit sandwich, gluten-free and vegan cinnamon roll, some sides, and of course, some coffee, and it was all incredible. And for the rest of the day, our goal is to experience some of Oklahoma and Oklahoma City's history. There are a bunch of different museums to check out around town, but we're heading to the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum, which is home to thousands of Western artifacts. When you first enter the museum, you're instantly greeted by a giant Native American sculpture about the Trail of Tears. Long before European Americans claimed the land that is now Oklahoma, many groups of Native Americans lived here for centuries. In 1541, the first Europeans arrived, and over the next few centuries, America continued its expansion. Starting in 1830, relocation of Native Americans began, forcing them from the southeast to the Indian Territory, now known as Oklahoma. This series of forced relocation was called the Trail of Tears, and this giant statue signifies a Native American and its horse, both weary in body and spirit at the end of their journey. Today, Oklahoma has the second highest Native American population in the U.S., with 39 Native American tribes currently in Oklahoma, and five of those being indigenous. Besides the sculpture, the museum does have a couple other Native American exhibits showcasing different clothing and art. And you can also see replicas of Native American dwellings, like cliff dwellings, just like what we have seen in Colorado and New Mexico.
There's also another museum here in Oklahoma City called the First Americans Museum, which focuses exclusively on Native American history. So if you'd like to learn more about Native Americans, definitely go check that one out. We unfortunately only had time for one museum, but that one's on our list for next trip. But this museum focuses mostly on cowboy and Western culture. And to learn more about it, we're meeting up with one of the museum's curators named Michael, who's gonna show us all around. So the heart and soul of this place is cowboy history. No museum can tell that story as well as we can. Michael first took us around some exhibits that explained how cowboys originated. In North America, the first cattle and horses arrived in Mexico in the 1500s by the conquistadors, leading to the first cowboys in North America, the vaqueros, which eventually spread to the United States. But the true origin goes further back in Africa. The North African tribesmen who conquered the Iberian Peninsula, which is Spain and Portugal today, conquered that in the 8th century, and they bring a couple of things with them. One is a different style of riding called alhineta, which means up in the air, allowed for more flexibility in the saddle. They also use the hackamore, which is a North African technique of managing your horse. Um, and also managing stock from the back of a horse was largely unknown in Europe, in Northern Europe and Western Europe. So that comes together in Spain and is then transfer, transferred over into Mexico. West African uh, herdsmen, especially the Fulani, used ropes, but they roped from foot. They didn't rope from the back of a horse. So the coming together and the coalescence of roping technology with riding and horse managing technology comes together to create what we know as the cowboy today. So that's why Africa is really cowboy ground zero because of those two technologies that are filtered through Spain, filtered through Mexico, and then go up into the United States and then south down to South America. We then learned about the different cultures of cowboys and got a deep dive into one of the current exhibits all about cowboy hats. There's no greater recognizable symbol worldwide than a man in a western hat or a woman in a western hat. We got to see a variety of hats from different cultures, as well as some hats from western performers, including a couple from the famous actor John Wayne. After spending time with Michael, we met up with another guide named Ron, who showed us around some exhibits with beautiful western art. While some of the art was in the form of paintings, the museum also had an exhibit of art in the form of items you can wear and actually purchase. And to end our time in the museum, we explored a replica western town and learned about the history of rodeos. This museum is loaded with information. We spent a little over three and a half hours here and we barely scratched the surface of all there is to see and learn here. A huge thank you to Michael and Ron for showing us around and helping us digest all of the information. And to continue our experience of Western culture here in OKC, we're off to Stockyard City. Stockyard City is a cattle trading and meat packing area that launched in 1910 with two packing houses and was the city's first major industrial effort. Cattle would be driven, inspected, then sold at auction to be shipped to other places or transported next door to be packed. As the packing plants grew, this area did as well with a streetcar, hotels, restaurants, a post office, and other businesses to accommodate the ranchers. And by the 1970s, it became the world's largest stalker and feeder cattle market. And it still operates today. You can watch the auctions for free every Monday and Tuesday, and the area is also home to Western shops and restaurants. This area has such a different vibe than the other parts of town that we visited. The other neighborhoods and districts have just been really trendy and modern, but this truly just feels like we're out in the West. Howdy, y'all. You look good. <laughs> I like, like it. it. Yeah. It doesn't look too bad. Huh? I have never seen you in a cowboy hat. And I I've never like seen it. myself in one. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
One of the most iconic places in Oklahoma City is Cattleman's Steakhouse, which is located right here in Stockyard City. Cattleman's has been in operation since 1910 and is the oldest continually operating restaurant in the city, with the owners changing in 1945 when Gene Wade won the restaurant during a dice game. Over the years, the restaurant has been featured on many shows like Man vs. Food and Diners, Drive-Ins and Dives, and it has been visited by some pretty famous folks, including some former presidents. So we obviously cannot pass up the chance to experience it for ourselves. So they're obviously famous for their steaks here, but before our steaks arrive, we wanted to try another one of their dishes that they're famous for, lamb fries. Not gonna lie, a little nervous about this. <laughs> So if you're wondering, what are lamb fries? And why are you so nervous? Well, lamb fries are also known as Rocky Mountain oysters, and if you don't know what that is, they're testicles. <laughs> and these are specifically lamb testicles. I picked the biggest one on the plate. <laughs> Honestly, if you didn't tell me that's what that was, I would have no idea. It really just tastes like the breading. I don't know. <laughs> I don't... I don't know if I really taste it. It does feel a little wrong eating this, especially as a male. <laughs> but um, I don't know, it's just like a thinly little sliced piece of meat in there. It's tender. <laughs> um, it just doesn't have a ton of flavor other than the breading on here. They're not bad. I never thought I'd be eating this, but it's a Western staple and we like to try the local dishes when we travel, so I don't know. That tastes just like a chicken tender. <laughs> That's like a thin chicken tender, chicken nugget. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Hmm. <laughs> Another food off the bucket list. <laughs> steak is in my top five favorite foods, and I'm so excited about this. I got me the T-bone steak. Ooh. Our waiter saw me staring at it. He goes, "Should we leave them alone together?" Me and the steak. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cooked to perfection, so juicy, tons of flavor. Mm. So it turns out today is actually National Chicken Fried Steak Day. So you know what I had to get. Mm. The breading on the outside here is nice and thin and crispy. The steak is tender and juicy. Mop it through this gravy here. It's got tons of pepper in there. That is worthy of National Chicken Fried Steak Day. We have one final historic site we wanna visit here in OKC, the Oklahoma City National Memorial. This memorial is in honor of the bombing that occurred on the morning of April 19th, 1995, that killed 168 people and left hundreds more injured. There is a paid museum, but since it's late, we're just gonna visit the free memorial, which you can visit any time of day. And we hear it's especially beautiful at night when it's all lit up. Even though this is a super sad place to visit, it's extremely powerful and such an important piece of Oklahoma City's history to experience. The memorial is so beautifully done. Just seeing all of the chairs really puts into perspective how many lives were lost during this tragedy. But we hate to end our time here in OKC on such a somber note. So we do have one more spot that we're gonna check out tomorrow. And it does have a little bit of a special meaning for me and it should be pretty sweet. Ever since I was little, my nickname from my dad, which is spread to other family members, is Katie Bug. It's a very special nickname for me, and here in Oklahoma City, they have a place called Katie Bugs. And as soon as I saw the name, I just knew we had to come here. So 
Katie Bugs is a walk-up sweet shop with tons of just delicious, sweet treats. We got so many things. <laughs> and this time of year they have hot chocolate and in the summer they have shave ice. It is the cutest place of all time. Right now they have a pumpkin patch. There's just pumpkins everywhere. The building's so cute. Everything is so freaking cute. <laughs> the first of our dessert feast are apple cider donut muffins with the homemade caramel sauce. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Whoa. <laughs> So as I mentioned, they have hot chocolate this time of year, and they also have homemade marshmallows, and they're flavored marshmallows. So you can get a flavored marshmallow in your hot chocolate, which then flavors the hot chocolate, and I got a salted caramel marshmallow. Oh. That is chocolatey perfection. So this chocolate cake is what they started with. Oh man, it looks so good. That is dense looking. So this is ridiculously moist, super dense chocolate cake there. Nice light vanilla frosting here. Best chocolate cake I've ever had, easily. Last but certainly not least, an absolutely giant oatmeal cream pie, which those store-bought oatmeal cream pies was one of my favorite treats growing up. I'm just getting to relive my childhood here. Childhood name, childhood treats, but the elevated version. Mmm. That cookie is perfectly soft, but also kind of crispy on the outside. This place is hands down, this Katie bug approved. Oh, that cookie is really good. <laughs> My God, this is delicious. <laughs> A huge thank you to Visit OKC for inviting us to explore. This is such a cool city. We had a blast here getting to do all sorts of different activities. We cannot believe that when we lived in Texas full time, we never came here. We have been missing out big time. There's just so much to do here, including so many things we did not have time for. So to get even more ideas of things to do in OKC, head to visitokc.com where they have just about everything listed. But our time in Oklahoma isn't quite over yet. We're actually gonna go to an OKC Thunder game tonight, which we are super stoked about and then we're gonna start heading south to some beautiful nature spots in the southern part of the state for our final adventure here in Oklahoma. <laughs> I did horrible! <laughs> ice cream on my shoe. No! Oh my gosh, it's all over my shoe. <laughs> all you. better. Awesome husband award. <laughs> <laughs>